Hey guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. Thank you for joining us. I am diving into the critical geopolitical tensions reshaping the oil market and the factors influencing prices. Now, geopolitical tensions are increasingly influencing the oil market. Recent events indicates that if Israel targets Iran's oil facilities, it could nearly eliminate nearly 2 million barrels per day from the global supply. Shildrop chief commodities analyst at SEB emphasized that such actions could easily push oil prices over $200 per a barrel. In this tense environment, President Biden has expressed strong support for Israel during a call with Prime Minister Netanyahu on October 3rd. He affirmed that the U.S. stands firmly with Israel amid rising hostilities, emphasizing Israel's right to defend itself and the importance of of coordinated military response to recent missile attacks. As we assess the current supply and demand dynamics, Brent crude prices are around $78 per barrel. Analysts anticipate that given the geopolitical instability, prices could surpass $150 per barrel if tensions escalate. The shift in demand, particularly from non-OECD countries within the BRICS framework, is reshaping global oil trade. Recent statements from Iranian officials, including General Amur, of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps suggests potential retaliatory actions that could disrupt oil supply. He stated, if we are targeted, we will respond and no oil will flow from the region. Such remarks highlights Iran's willingness to leverage its influence over oil infrastructure to deter aggressions. Additionally, Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Khanai warned that any attack on Iran would lead to severe consequences threatening the broader conflict in the region. Turning to shell oil production, U.S. companies face significant challenges. Recent trends show that shell companies require prices to remain at least $90 per barrel to achieve profitability. This requirement arises from high operational cost and rapid decline rates of shell wells, necessitating that continuous drilling just to maintain output. With many Tier 2 assets already developed, the incentive to drill further diminishes, leading to a cautious approach among producers, which is why the whole Trump drill baby drill just isn't going to work. The economic climate has forced shell companies to focus on capital discipline. Industry insiders have reflected that they don't want to drill themselves out of business, underscoring the reality that high inflation is driving up drilling costs, complicating the economics of shell production. The influence of BRICS countries on the oil market cannot be underestimated. Recent data indicates that China has significantly increased its imports from Iran, circumventing traditional Western sanctions. You got to ask yourself, if China is circumventing Western sanctions and they're illegally, according to global laws, importing Iranian oil, then one would assume that how in the world are we to know exactly how much oil China is importing? Because EIA keeps reporting and analysts keep saying disappointing oil imports by China, yet they're illegally importing oil from Iran. You got to think about that. I think China is importing a lot more oil than what we know, especially since they're trying to avoid sanctions and importing Iranian oil, which they should not be. Back to what we're saying here. This trend reshapes the global oil landscape, creating upward pressure on prices as reliance on non-Western suppliers grows. In summary, as geopolitical tensions rise and supply-demand balances shift, we must stay vigilant for potential price increases. The prevailing narrative suggests a decline in oil demand and the viability of shell production, but the evidence tells a different story. Under the current climate, narratives suggest that oil demand is waning and green energy will replace oil, yet the reality shows that substantial alternatives have yet to materialize. With over $5 trillion spent on green initiatives, Meaningful impacts remain elusive. Non-OECD demand is on the rise, but for shell companies, it remains unprofitable to drill amid inflationary pressures. Consequently, the looming decline in shell production raises significant concerns. If we remain on this trajectory, oil supply will continue to dwindle under the false pretense of abundance, setting the stage for higher prices as demand outstrips available supply. So I'm here to tell you, that under the current environment, oil prices will go up. It's really simple. The whole fundamental picture of supply versus demand is going to be changed. 
with, with everything that's happening in the Middle East, with BRICS, and with the West. All the West has, has to do is take numbers, spin it in their own way, and report it. It's oil prices drop. And this is all false pretense. And so the system itself is making decisions based on politics versus making decisions based on what is needed. We need more oil. We need to find more oil. We need to, to realize that here's the truth. The truth is that shale cannot save us. There's a not enough shell underneath our feet. The left, the right, you guys need to get your facts straight. We don't have enough energy. And even if we went back to the tier one assets, even if we could go back in time, and even if the banks wanted to finance it, we don't have the infrastructure in place to be able to produce more shale. Back in 2012, we were producing 6 million barrels a day. And then all of a sudden, we doubled the oil output without doubling the infrastructure. We don't have the infrastructure in place. We really should be consuming natural gas. We're not. We got to export 6 million barrels a day, not because for profits, not because we have too much, but simply because we don't have the infrastructure to even utilize all the oil that we're producing, which forces us to be relied upon the Middle East. So it doesn't matter how much shale oil we produce, there we still rely upon the Middle Eastern infrastructure because Saudi Arabia and these other countries have the ability to refine the crude that we produce and we do not. We need to upgrade our infrastructure. Nobody's going to do that. We don't have the time. And who's, who's going to take the risk of a 10-year project that could potentially be shut down just by some crazy left or some policy by the global elite or the ESG guys or the... There's many people in power that for whatever reason, they have their reasons to try to shut down oil. It just makes absolutely no sense when the, the demand for oil is growing. And so you've got Middle East countries that are ignoring the lectures of the West to focus on green energy, to expand. And that's why you're seeing an increase in global oil demand. But the narrative continues to, to keep speaking lies that shale is increasing, oil demand is decreasing, green energy is expanding, it's replacing our fossil fuel needs. Yes, there is some truth to that, but we cannot rely upon that to the point to where we don't have to expand on demand. I'm telling you right now, Iran's goal is to eliminate Israel and anyone that supports Israel. And the only way to do that is with high oil prices and with nuclear technology. They need both of those. Without oil, they cannot fund their nuclear projects. They cannot fund their terror. Without oil, they will cease to exist. If their oil facilities get attacked, they're going to attack someone else's. If their nuclear sites get attacked, they're going to do whatever it takes to escalate the price of a barrel of crude. The greatest way to attack the West is not with missiles. Because you drop a bomb on America, you will cease to exist. We have the most intelligent weaponary and military force this world, and with an unlimited checkbook. Congress would release trillions of dollars for our military before we would allow any third-rate country to come in and destroy us. We have more cash than any country in the world, which is why the only reason why we have the greatest military in the world. It's not because we're smarter. It's not because we're better. It's because with money, you could buy the smartest people in the world and you could mass produce like you wouldn't believe. But without these relationships, we could not be the superpower we are today. And on our pride, we said, we don't need you anymore. And so we are going to protect ourselves at all costs. So no country would ever come against us. The only way to do it is indirectly. The higher oil prices go, the less cash America has to spend on military, on weapons, and influencing other wars, like the Ukraine war, like the Middle Eastern wars that are happening in, in, in Iran, in Israel, in Syria, in Yemen, in Lebanon. All of these wars are funded with cash, with U.S. dollar. The higher the price of barrel of crude goes, the less valuable our dollar becomes. And the more BRICS gets organized, the less valuable our dollar becomes. And the more they could trade, they don't have to play these games like China is having to evade sanctions. Under their own system, it cannot be sanctioned. And if they continue to only buy OPEC and BRICS oil, it's leaving Western oil out of the loop. And then when that happens, 
we're going to be forced to submit to how the BRICS game is. And in, in doing so, we're going to be forced to use another currency and we're going to be forced to buy oil at their price. Because here's the deal. If we're cut off from the Middle Eastern oil, we don't have enough oil. America doesn't have enough oil. We're not self-sufficient. If, if, if we were producing 20 million barrels of heavy crude a day, we would have enough, but we're not. That's why we're exporting 6 million barrels a day, and that's why we're importing 4 million. We need the Middle East. We need BRICS. We need OPEC, and we can't do it without them, but they're setting the stage to cut us off. I'm telling you right now, with, with tensions in the Middle, Middle East increasing, oil prices are going to go to very high levels. And some, and I, I guarantee you, like clockwork, people are going to say, hey, Sean, what stock do I need to invest in? Look, most shell companies are stock companies. Shale oil and gas is the most expensive barrel of oil to produce, and their assets are getting less quality, which means there's going to be less profitability. Now, if oil prices go to $150 a barrel, yes, every stock is going to go up. To give me, For me to give you a specific stock to invest in, I, I I, I'm not interested in that. I'm not a stock guy, okay? There's a lot of people that, that, that are much smarter at stocks. I focus on oil drilling, okay? Conventional oil. So while, while shell companies are faltering right now and not being profitable during these times, conventional drilling is very profitable. Shell oil wells cost like $20 million to drill, five, as low as $5 million to upwards of $20 million per well. Where a conventional well, they could cost anywhere from Hundred fifty thousand upwards of of two million dollars, and at seventy something dollars a barrel, very profitable. These same wells were drilled back when oil was twenty dollars a barrel, and so the reason why there's less people involved in conventional because how in the world can a, a multi billion dollar oil company that has a billion dollars to spend? Uh, how many wells would they have to drill? They they just can't feed their appetite. They're just too big. These shell wells they could produce a massive amount of oil because there's thousands and thousands of acres to develop with shell where conventional wells, you might find 250, 500 acre sections and you produce all that oil and then you find another structure, okay? Where, where, where shell, it's a resource play. It's, it's like a huge mining operation where you just, it's a, it's a numbers game. It, you, you throw a billion dollars at it and you develop that way. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. And if you're interested in learning more about oil and gas investments, Look at my description below, look at my comment section, and I, I, I teach and I, I, I explain and, and help people in, invest in the uh, oil industry. All right, guys, we'll talk soon. Thanks.